So this is our first joint patron pick. Goodness, this is pretty cool. Hi guys, welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. Look at all these wonderful new albums that I just got at the record store. Actually, it was an antique store. He really hooked me up too. I told him about the channel and I told you guys that uh, you would probably enjoy those. There's probably there's a few more too. I'm gonna switch them out for the next couple videos. See if you can spot them all. Uh, welcome to Toll Tuesday and welcome back to the full album Toll Tuesday. Cause guess what? We're gonna be listening to Crest of a Knave for the first time. This is the Grammy winning album uh, that I have heard so much about. Uh, Ford Prefect, Cora, and also Jason's gonna contribute for the second half of the album. So we're gonna do the whole album. We're gonna be doing uh, side one basically this video and side two will be next week uh side one is steel monkey farm on a freeway jump start she said she was a dancer and then also a special track dogs in midwinter and the next week is budapest mountain men the waking edge and raising steam yeah so that's like the cd version apparently there's like two or three different songs on the cd version as well so we're gonna listen to as many songs as possible of course because we love Jethro Tull on this channel. And if you like Jethro Tull as well, we do this every Tuesday. Uh, I've done a couple albums. We've done what, Thick as a Brick, Passion Play, a couple different, we've worked through a couple other albums as well. Not full, uh, but we're getting there. Come hang out. All right, so first up, Steel Monkey. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. Mm -hmm. Ian, Martin, and Dave. Okay, Martin, goddamn. That sounds like metal. His vocals sound so different. <laughs> this is dope. Oh, I love that. It sounds so on edge. Such a good section, I love this. So Ian does the keyboards too?
Bro, that's metal. <laughs> no shit. Did Jethro Toll do a metal album? That's why they beat Metallica? They should beat Metallica. They should. Absolutely, they should. Farm on the freeway. What a different side of them. I've never heard this This is so good. What the fuck? Mm. Oh, the flute just accenting that. That's so good. Flute is kind of farther back in the mix than usual. It's like more a part of the sound than just like sticking out. It's interesting. Oh, there's that 80s sound. Away, guys, I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting this. This reminds me of a fashion play. They forgot the 
who told us what this old land was for Wrote who turns the acre boy between the stones This was no South Fork, it was no Ponderosa But it was the place that I called home They say they gave me compensation I gotta start taking notes during these so I remember what to talk about I was a rich man Bro, Martin has been killing it so far. So much soul in this, man. God, that was fucking amazing. <laughs> what a track, dude. Wow, I am blown away right now. Jump start. Cheers. In the dark of the city, backward something stirs, then slips away. Law and order in darkest nights, bridge crime and punishment to play. Yeah, Mr. Policeman, won't you come on over? I'll be up to the power lines of your love. Jump starts, told me the way. I love the Jump country starts, vibe of this. Away. It's not like a woods vibe, it's like a country. It's so the weird. Cruise machine, the reaper, smoking his fender street. Another day with ball and chain, I do my time at home again. Yeah, this is Maggie, won't you come on over? Put me up to the power lines on your love. Don't start, but tell me the way. Don't start, but tell me the way. Oh, we should have blamed the officers on me. The use of the flute has been so well executed in this. It almost sounds like he's singing and playing at the same time. This is so different, but once again, it's still toll. 
Man, these guys are genius. You can blame the newsman talking at you on the satellite TV. But if you're fighting for your shipyard, you might as well just blame the sea. Hey, Mr. Weatherman, come on over. Put me up to the power line. Saw that there's two different drummers, the Wayne Perry and Jerry Conway. I guess he like switch off. Oh, there's some '80s for you. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, three for three so far. Just the energy and the pace they've had has been fantastic. She said she was a dancer. Yes, she did. Don't judge me. She said she was a dancer. If I believed it, it was my business. She surely knew a thing or two about control Next to the bar we hit the samovar She almost slipped right through my fingers It was snowing outside and in her soul Well maybe you're a dancer And maybe I'm the king that was of a good line. I am I thought it through best to let the illusion roll I wouldn't say I've never heard that tale before uh, My frozen little senorita But if your dream is good, why not share it when the nights are cold? Hey, hey this album is a mood, what's bro. your story? They did take a time, don't hurry Maybe a student of the agricultural plan mm. Hey Moscow, what's your name? If you don't want to say, don't worry It would probably be hard for me to make it scan With a phrase book in her silk soft hand She spoke in riddles while the vodka listened I said, God, let me such look a up love about my piece of bones He tells a story so well She was the nearest thing to rock and roll <laughs> That side of the velvet curtain That separates eastern steel from western gold Hey, Miss Lasko, what's your story? You needn't speak aloud, just whisper Am I just the closest thing to an Englishman? You've seen me in your magazines Or maybe on state television I've got some Beatles vibes Dakota, But you won't take me out the can She said what? she was a dancer So she did it Lyrics, man. Oh my god. There's so much feeling in this so far. Man. She said crazy. she was a dancer. If I believed it, it was my business It felt like a merry dance that I was being led Damn, now I feel sad, so I stole one kiss, it was a near miss 
She looked at me like I was Jack the Ripper She leaned in close Good night was all she said So I took myself off to bed What a strange little track. That just touched my soul, bro. I've said bro like 10 times. That's how you know it's good, because I'm excited. <laughs> Dogs in the midwinter. I wish I didn't have such a piece of shit laptop so I could just listen to this damn album all the way through. Soon. vocals sound like older tall dude the keys have been so cool on this so far it's a cool like I don't know, addition to the sound it feels like. The postman and the taxman and the money left its ground like dogs in the middle of winter. The weaker of the herd can feel their eyes and hear them howl like dogs in the middle of winter. Well, the fox and the rabbit are at peace. Old doggies in the manger turn last suppers into beasts. <laughs> I love those keys, oh my god. It's like their bi tour in the snow dog. Wish it would keep going. I'm not. You guys have no idea how mad I am right now. This damn laptop. I'm gonna throw it out a window. I really am. A window. Oh man. Well, guys, that was certainly something. Um, 
I was not ready for it to be a full like straight. It wasn't like straight up metal. Like those first two songs are definitely metally. But then once it got to um, hold on, got my list right here. She said she was a dancer. Wow, bro, that one stopped me in my tracks. Like the lyrics. Like I've always known he's a poet, man, but. Some of those lines like hit so hard. They really did. Like I felt them in my soul. I really did. Like I've always known how much of a storyteller and how like well he can present a narrative through music and stuff like that. But and that was a short track too. It was pretty short. But honestly, that one really touched me. Uh, I don't know what it was about it exactly. And I don't know what it's so different about his vocals on this album other than um, the dogs in the midwinter song. That one was had his usual flute and vocals, like from the stuff I'm, I've heard and I'm used to. But for the rest of the album, the other four songs, that was so different. Like he almost had a different accent sounding sort of thing. Like it it really had a almost Southern USA rock feel to it, to some of it. And like the way, like in his drawl almost, like it was so weird how he was enunciating things and pronouncing, not even pronouncing, but the enunciating his cadence was different. Like, I just love that about them, that they can change from album to album, but still at the core be Jethro Tull. And, like, the only two original members are Ian and Martin, right? Yeah, then Dave Pegg on the bass, which uh, I'm used to, I think, John on bass. I, I know that um, his uh, th it kind of messed the band up after that, unfortunately. Um, but how could it not? Um, so it says uh, there's Dwayne or Dewan Perry on the drums, uh, on percussion as well, and then Jerry Conway drums and percussion, uh, and then Ian Anderson, Martin Barr, and Dave Be Pegg. Yeah, dude, Martin though, I was gonna say, like for the first couple songs that he was definitely the MVP of this so far, man. Like his, it almost is like metal, like the riffs here he's playing, the kind of tuning he has, the chords, like it all sounds very. Medley. He's got a lot of like slides and pulls and stuff like that, and it's it's really cool. It's a very nice, like like I said, like I said about the different keyboards. It's a nice addition to their sound, and that's what they do. And that's what I've noticed is they'll take a couple things out, put a couple things in, like on Passion Play with saxophone, and you know, and they took the sax out, and you know, they put this in with the kind of metal sound and the way they use the flute to kind of highlight the guitar in ways, um, like the riffs that he's playing and. He'll, the the flute is way back in the mix compared to usual, other than Dogs in the Midwinter. But that song's not on the vinyl either, so I don't know if that's like an additional bonus track or something. I don't know. You guys will let me know probably. Uh, but that one sounded like Old Toll, but the rest of it, like the flute was way back in the mix, and it sounded different than usual. Like the way he was using it to uh, like highlight different things and accent different sections and stuff, like it, it was way different than usual. But I really liked it though. Like this is... Man, like, it's so hard to pick, like, what your favorite stuff is. And I'm not even trying to do that. That's not what I'm saying. But, like, even for Jethro Tull, like, everything is so good in its own way. Like, even if one thing is a little bit less in one category, it's more in another compared to another one, you know? Like, they, they all have their value. And it's crazy how good and consistent these guys are, even with lineup changes and tragedy. And I know Ian lived a very interesting life, so he could... You know, I know he, that's what he did. He wrote music for his entire life because he's got such a, he lived such an interesting life. He's got an experience, you know, and I've noticed like there's only um, a certain few people nowadays from my generation that actually have like life experience, like with actual tragedy and, you know, accomplishing, you know, self improvement and taking a look at yourself. It's not a social media generation thing to actually take accountability and look at yourself. It's oh, it's always everyone else's fault, you know. I've noticed that about my generation. It's never them. And when it is them, it's just some self-serving way to um, boost their ego or something or get, like, attention or pity. And it's sad, man, because, like, I, I don't know. Like, my generation, they're such smart, talented people deep down, but they're just so bogged down with social media and all this societal pressure to do stupid stuff that doesn't even really matter in the end of the day, you know? And, like, I listen to music like this, and it reminds me of a time that I wasn't even alive for. And it, I don't know, man, it just makes me think of a world that, I don't know, I, I, we've gotten so divided and so, I don't know, nasty. And I feel I'm the same way, man. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with everyone else. Like, I've noticed that I'm kind of, 
I don't know, just a little more nastier than usual. And I don't know what's wrong or if something's going on. It's, I don't know, man, but the entire world feels like it just needs to <laughs> smoke a joint and chill out. And I'm definitely one of them. And, uh, it, you know, I'm just trying to learn as I go. Like this whole reacting thing, the whole YouTube thing, it's stressful, man. Like it is in its own way. Like, and I never didn't think I, I knew that, you know, but I, uh, I, I've been reaching out and talking with different, you know, labels and stuff like that and brands. Like I've had people messaging me and I might have a sponsor and stuff now. And it's kind of crazy, you know, things are moving at a rapid pace and I'm so grateful, you know, but I just want to, you know, not bite off more than I can chew. And this isn't me like, oh my God, I'm quitting, you know, nothing like that. No, I just, I just wanted to say that this music helps me so much, even though like my life is stressful with my kids, with the channel, with just my health, just everything in general, you know, I, this is my solace. This, you know, I'm saying like when I need catharsis, I come and I listen to this music and Jethro Tull, especially they, they just have such a way about them to let you escape while you're in their music. It's like you get to inhabit Ian's and Martin's world for a little bit just to escape your own, you know, and it's so needed sometimes like music is such a blessing. It, uh, it, it allows you to just leave for a little bit and then come back and you're like, oh, well, I'm back, you know. <laughs> and uh, this was a journey so far and I can't wait to finish it up next week. Um, honestly, I might finish it up early, to be honest, because that was really, really good and I want to listen to the rest of it. I know the next track, Budapest, apparently is fantastic. And that was uh, Cora's original well, uh, original request for the month and it was like a live version of it some, for some other thing. But then we uh, integrated some requests and uh, Jason... Cora and uh, Ford Prefect, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, I think out of all that, I'd have to say my favorite track was She Was a Dancer and then Farm on a Freeway. And Farm on a Freeway was so fucking good, man. Like that whole, it almost has like a country kind of southern vibe to it in some of the sections, but it's got this bite to it too. I don't know how to describe it. Like there was such a weird, almost uneasiness to like Steel Monkey and like the keys kind of set you like you know it's you're like your nerves are frayed a little bit like you know and such a great intro song it was really hard hitting it just kind of jumped right into it you know and then it transitions into farm on a freeway where it, it takes a step back just for a second and then it takes it into overdrive you know I, i've noticed that these guys are so talented at dynamics like within a song structure and like the the mountains and like the peaks and valleys you know what i mean they just know how to take you on an adventure and just kind of leave you enthralled by whatever journey that they're taking you on. And I, uh, I just love this band. I've just been rambling probably. I apologize. I really like Jethro Tull. Out of all the bands I've listened to, they're easy top five for me, like from this channel. Just from Ian's personality, his uh, charisma on stage, his music, like it shines through. Like I haven't watched a freaking live thing of theirs in forever, but I still feel his charisma come through the audio alone. And it's crazy, man. He's that talented. What a dude, man. Uh, and then Martin, honestly, I think was my favorite part of this album so far. That just straight up almost metal electric guitar and then that southern twangy kind of stuff he had on the other two tracks, man. It's fantastic, honestly, and I can't wait to finish it up. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I know this is kind of a longer one, but Jethro Tull, like y'all said, is not a, uh, you know, it's not a band you should do track by track. And I can't do every band and every album. I got to pick and choose them, you know, got to pick your battles. But this is a battle that I will fight every time because Jethro Tull is worth it. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you all didn't know, we have a Patreon right here. That's a picture of it. There is a link in the description. Go click it. Uh, come join us, man. we got a community of over 300 folks. If you join any of the tiers, you get access to all of our block videos, Patreon exclusives, our Discord, all kinds of stuff. Um, but if you want one free request a month, join the $10 tier or up, and you can get one free video a month. There's going to be guidelines and, set, uh, and guidelines and rules and blah, blah, blah set up by March 1st when the next post goes out for the Patreon requests. Uh, I'll send the post out and then you comment whatever, you know, song you want done. And then the community gets to see, you know, what the tentative schedule is for the month and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. I enjoy it. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day. I will see y'all next Toll Tuesday for side two of Crest of a Knave. Goodbye.